Today we're going to take apart the DAB radio. As I say, I've already built an FM transmitter into this, but it's just a cheap mono resonant um, circuit, nothing fancy at all. But um, yeah, I want it in stereo, so that's the transmitter that we're going to build in. I'm not too sure whether I'll probably build it inside rather than um, uh, um, put it on the back. I was tempted to, but there certainly is room. It wouldn't protrude too much, but I was going to mount it on the back somewhere and just obviously drill a hole and run the wires through. But I think really once you've set the frequency on this, because it when it powers up it does resume the same frequency, it remembers what frequency you'd set it to. I'm just going to build it inside. There really will be no need to adjust the frequency. The one that I've already got inside here, I don't I don't need to adjust the frequency frequency of it, it works fine. Right. Uh, it's something to point with. This is obviously the um, transmitter that I built in here. I've just hooked it in as a ground wire. It takes 12 volts from the DC input. Actually, it's nine nine volts, and um, it just taps off one audio wire from the left-hand channel. So obviously, that's what we're going to remove. I've removed my body circuit now, but uh, the rest of the body still remains. It's a, it's a bit untidy. The Venice 6 module, which is underneath, which is made by Frontier Silicon, is quite a tidy thing, but um, the Blix analog circuitry which they put on top here is a bit messy. We'll go into it in, in another video, I think. So, let's power this up. In the olden days, radios used to take a long time to come on because the valves were warming up. Now, radios take a long time to come on because they need to boot up. Okay, now I've got lucky with this because I can take 3.3 volts. This meter, so you can see. I've got 3.3 volts right there. Very tempting to use that. Now undoubtedly that feeds um, a digital circuit. It's a one-app regulator by the way that's there. But it's just too tempting not to use. Uh, it could induce possible digital noise within the audio. But it's just too tempting not to try it for the convenience of it being right there at this end of the board. So I'm going to put the transmitter there. I'll just test its audio to make sure it sounds good. The alternative, I was going to use um, a little surface mount LM317 to produce a 3.3 volt rail, but uh, say that's very convenient that right on the end there. And we only need 40 milliamps to power the transmitter, so I'm just going to put it there and see what it looks like. I got that fitted neatly inside now. It just so happens that it mounts rather nicely within the existing mouldings of the radio, right on the back. There's some little grooves in there in the inside of the case. I could actually flip this around. If I cut a square hole in the back and two holes for the uh, up down channel selector, it would fit in there really well. But for now, it just got on the inside. It just squashes in there, fits really neatly. So, taking our supply from here, 3.3 volts, or was it 3.24 or 3.25 on the meter, but it's near as damn it 3.3. Um, takes our audio from the phonos. I've put a little ferrite ring on the audio leads. Probably didn't need to, but I had one available, so I've just stuck it on. The external area we don't really need it because there's plenty of signal getting downstairs. So let's power it up and see what happens. Mm. 
Okay, dazzling blue LED. Wait for the valves to warm up. Alright, shared media. Let's go in there. Empty, yeah, that's okay. There is no shared media. Nothing streaming on my network at the moment. Shared folders. Work group, server. I'll do. I'll do. All right. Don't you like what? Turn that down a bit. Now set the transmit frequency to 107. Yeah, I, I was using 102 before, but 107 seems pretty clear. Plus the fact that um, getting it at the top of the FM band, it makes it so you can still actually use this on FM. Not that I listen to FM broadcasts that much, it's just a local independent radio station on FM really, and that's not worth listening to, they just play the same five records all day. So, 107, let's try it on the scanner. Downstairs and try it down there, I think. Well, I wanted to try it out on, on a portable so I could go down the garden, but the batteries are flat, so while they're charging, let's have to try it on a, on a radio, on a proper radio. Proper 80s radio. If I can remember, oh, I've got lighting on that, so here we go. Ooh, that sounds all right. Good signal. Not too bad. Not too shabby at all. Right, I'm about 30 yards away from the transmitter in the shed. So, radio on. Absolutely no signal from radio 4 unless the aerial was up. What's our transmit frequency? 107.5. Full signal. So it works quite well. Looking at the data sheet, the output power from that transmitter module is about 25 milliwatts. So not overly powerful, but it certainly gets around the house and around the garden. And that little uh, extension there that I'll put on is still called up inside the radio. So yeah, not bad at all. And the quality is excellent.